Hello, welcome. If anyone's there. Oh, today we are going to try Beacon Pines. It's been on my list for a little while now. to my book. Though it might at first appear like many books you've come across, it is far from ordinary. You may, therefore, have some misunderstandings about its nature. The story that awaits you has not been fully told. In fact, its conclusion is not yet known, even to myself. It is in that way that my book is special. It is in that way that you are special. Without you, there is no story. Chapter one. Normal isn't what it used to be. This is a story about change. Nestled in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. Far from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, a young boy walks alone at dawn. His name is Luca Van Horn, and like you, dear reader, he's here for a reason. Luca's closest friend. He possessed many fine qualities, but subtlety was not one of them. Lolo finally noticed the tears welling in his friend's eyes and the flowers on the grave. So, for those that don't know, uh, Beacon Pines is supposed to be like a mystery game. Tickle. The hell? Wonderful! I had a good feeling about you from the moment you opened my book. That charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Keep hold of it for now. Its purpose will reveal itself soon enough. 
the ability to tickle. Oh, they're respawning. Yeah, I almost forgot the whole reason I was looking for you. I was wondering if you'd ever get to that. I found the perfect way to start our summer. How's that? Rolo looked to the side suspiciously. Not here. They might be watching. They who? Shh, not so loud. We need to do this in a secure location. Mission Control. Alright, I just have to tell Grant and then we can head out. What are you going to tell her? I don't know. I'll think of something. If it's all the same to you, I'll meet you at the welcome sign. Your Grant still kind of wigs me out. I don't do well with new people. She moved in, like, half a year ago. Just meet me at the sign when you're done. Suit yourself. I won't be long. Tell Gran before heading out with Rolo. interlude. Remember that charm you found in the dandelion patch? There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. They've been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Some of them can be found in this very house. A charm in this house, huh? Let's go see. Ooh, I can jump. Since Gran had moved in, the house was more peaceful, more orderly, and more covered in flowery fabric. One of his father's old Luca had spent countless hours listening to anything and everything with it. Not for years, though. Ponder. one right there. Okay, maybe not. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Just some dusty knickknacks. Let's see if we go upstairs. Luca paused at his parents' bedroom door. He just wasn't ready to go in yet. Oh, so both of his parents must have passed. Gran had commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved in. Some things need shelter from a young boy's mischief, she said. Hide. Wait, so they get two bedrooms. They all live here. Luca tossed on his favorite old sweater. Even though it was the first day of summer, a chill still hung in the air. <laughs> okay. Moving in meant that most of Luca's things had been crammed in the corner. Luca was somewhat annoyed by the situation. Gran's bed was undisturbed. Luca didn't mind that she had a habit of falling asleep in front of the fireplace. It meant that he could read late into the night. Oh, I can jump, but I can't get on top of anything. Damn. 
Let's go find Gran. An array of prepared meals crowded the refrigerator, each labeled with the day of the week. A pair of dull scissors, a broken can opener, a mostly empty bottle of glue, and some loose string. Got the junk badge. Or charm, I guess it's called. What was, what, what was the point of turning on the sink? And I can't turn it, oh, I can, can't turn it off. The only piece of furniture Gran had brought when she moved in was an old hutch. Okay, outside I go, I guess. Oh my, this is quite exciting. I am now certain that you are the one I've been waiting for all these years. You'll recall I was a bit coy regarding the use of charms earlier. Excuse me, I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. You are about to encounter your first turning point. There are certain times in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. Step forth, dear reader. A sturdy old wheelbarrow. What else can I discover here? Young Luca would spend hours hiding in the bushes, waiting for a chance to jump out and she always enjoyed humoring him by feigning terror. A beginner's guide to gardening laid open on the bench. So, I got all of those. And I'm guessing I have no choice but to use Tickle here. Hey, Gran, I'm, I'm gonna go hang with Rolo for the day. See you later. Hold up now. Where are you and Rolo heading exactly? Oh, nowhere special. just gonna go chill for the day you boys are always in a hurry to do nothing we stick to what we're good at well make sure you're done chilling in time for supper easy impressive you've managed to navigate your first turning point without too much of a mess that is the power of charms a single word can change everything. I think it's time to introduce you to the Chronicle. The Chronicle is a record of the decisions you've made. You can see the turning point which has been revealed. At any time, you can use the Chronicle to go back and invoke different charms, creating new branches. Luckily for us, this is the one and only turning point where the charms won't dramatically alter fate. It's the perfect opportunity to experiment with rewriting things. Bet. Let's go see. We're gonna go hide. We were just gonna go hide for the day. We, we were just gonna go hide for the day. Hide? is trying to hide something, they avoid literally using the word hide. Yeah, I, I guess Rolo bet some other kids that we could beat them in hide and seek. Aren't you a little old, too old for that? It's, it's not like there's much else to do around here. Well, make sure you boys are done playing little game in time for supper. Try it again. <clears throat> Let's 
to ponder. Just gonna go ponder for the day. We we were just gonna go ponder for the day. Oh really? What are you boys going to ponder on such a lovely day exactly? This was Luca's chance to sell his alibi. Um, you know, big stuff, small stuff, medium, mostly medium pondering. Nailed it. Well, make sure you don't overburden yourself with the pre ponderance of pondering. Huh? Oh, forget it. Off with you now. Do, 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 do. Oh, hey, Luca. You and Rolo stay out of trouble. Huh? I know. I know. Oh, and of course, the challenges get in trouble what a liar oh, nothing I could either anything I can find in here do, 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 do. no I don't want to go back in okay no 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 oh what's this the fuck <laughs> all right Thinks he looks all cool just leaning against that fence post. Come on, come on. Dang it, Rolo. For a town that saw a few visitors, the welcome was perhaps more grand than necessary. Ooh, oh, hunter. If I go this way. The road leading to Beacon Pines was long and uninspiring. A sort of natural barrier for the impatient. You know the drill. Don't let anyone discover our secret path. Yes, yes, because walking backwards is not Chapter two. uninspicuous. Welcome to Beacon Pines. For many years, this valley had been a small mining outpost. It wasn't until Sharper Valentine built his fertilizer company that Beacon Pines was established. Over the next 30 years, the town had grown and prospered. Until the foul harvest and his sudden death. In the six years since, everyone was simply trying to get by. Hey, Mr. Kerr. Hey there, pal. William Kerr was the CEO of Perennial Harvest Company. He had become a fixture around town over the past few years. After the failing of Valentine Fertilizer, the town was hungry to welcome a new source of employment. Excited for the big festival? Um, sure. Come on now, when I was your age, there was nothing more exciting than a town festival. The food, the music, the dancing. Sounds pretty alright. You're gosh dang right it is. I'm looking forward to letting off some steam myself. Make sure to invite all your little friends. I couldn't keep Rolo away if I tried. Excellent. Sorry, Luca. I got to get back to some, the proverbial grindstone. Our harvest awaits and all of that. Sorry, young man. Mr. Van Horn can't talk now. Very busy with preparations. There 
Augustus Valentine was not busy. Oh, sorry, Gus. How many times do I? It's Mr. Valentine. Gus instinctively loosened his tie. Alright, what can the mayor of Beacon Pines do for you today? Oh, just saying hi, I guess. Well, good day, you two, young Mr. Van Horn. Just lean down on the fence post. There you go. Hey, Mr. Sinclair. Mr. Sinclair continued snoring and lifted one eyelid, a tactic he often used to avoid undesirable conversation. Uh, don't you see I'm sleeping, boy? How's the napping today? Crummy as always. Used to have a perfectly nice view from here, till the perennial harvest put that monstrosity of a building in the way. Why don't you just move your chair a bit? Why should I be the one that moves? If it's a showdown they want, it ain't gonna be the one who big blinks. Come on, Andy. Grab his wallet. I'm sorry, Yiggy, I can't. Do it, or we pound you. Yup. Yeah, but my mom said, Yeah, bit, yeah, but. If I had a nickel for every yeah, but, I'd be the freaking king of nickels. Ain't that right, Trish? Yep. <laughs> 